want you to notice it's 740 in the morning and I ran my air conditioner which is right there in the window until almost 10 o'clock last night and it's already up to ease why is it so hard to see this 13.1 this morning bringing in 238 watts but that's I'm so glad I put the panels facing east and west because of that otherwise I would not have been able to run the air conditioner until that late last night. I would have been too freaked out thinking, because I got it down to 12.4. I was running it at, well, maybe it was 12.3, I don't know it. But every time I looked at it, it was 12.4. Um, and 12.37 is 70% of the battery. Those are my west facing solar panels. And I still think that's going to work out much better than all south facing panels. And then I have six more on the east side of the house that are, since it's now just sunrise, are going to be getting uh, the morning shot of solar energy. And I still think, like I said, that's the best way here in southern Arizona. Now, up in Minnesota or Maine or New York, it probably wouldn't work all that well. But down here in southern Arizona, it works beautiful. Um, like I said, the sun's just coming up over there, and we're a month and a half past the summer solstice. So. That means for three months, the sun's been going up over there. It's not even straight east and west yet. So that means for at least six months of the year, I'm getting extra energy. And I'm sure it'll be more than six months by the time all is said and done. My concern is during the winter time, of course. Uh, but I still think this is going to be very effective as far as uh, extra energy. I know when I had the panels up there, see on that roof, facing that way, south, that there was many a mornings because the sun's coming up over there, and I kept wishing I had more juice because I drained it out too much the night before. And I was starting the morning with hardly anything, 12.2, 12 or whatever. And I couldn't do anything until the sun started hitting the panels. Well, it was already hitting the panels on the other side of the roof until the clouds came. Um, but that, the clouds will affect it, whether they're south facing, east, west, north, doesn't make any difference. And yeah, there were so many times I wished I had more energy in the morning. I kept thinking, oh, I need to get a little, uh, wind generator of some sort, even if it's a small one that's only generating 50 watts at night, to get something extra there in the morning so I had more juice. Well, usually by the time I wake up in the morning, well, I've been like that for a while, um, the batteries are already getting juice. Now here, since the days are getting shorter, that advantage is going to be going away. Um, for example, this morning the sun didn't come up over the horizon till about 10 minutes to 6. A month ago it was before 5.30. So, and here by the end of, by the middle of winter, or the beginning of winter I should say, it'll be close to after 7 o'clock before the sun rises up over the horizon. That it'll be rising up over there. And my panels are on the other side of that roof. So I can't help but think that with my south facing panels right there and my east and west facing panels up on the roof that I'll be getting extra energy or more energy than I would with just strictly south facing panels. So for anybody who's uh, got solar or thinking of doing solar, evaluate, go out, watch the sun and figure out where you are and where the panels could be mounted east and west or even southeast and southwest to gain a lot more energy. 
You might be amazed. Um, I'm very happy, very glad with the way this has all turned out and the way the uh, solar panels are situated. I could use a little more juice during the day when I'm running the air conditioner, but I mean, you can't do better than 100%. <laughs> So, uh, this is a poem that my brother, actually I should say my mother's other son, wrote on the night that my father died, back in 1981. But it goes, he longed for a lifetime to live out west. A man of hope, he was one of the best. His dream came true, though late in his life. A little log home, a warm and loving wife. That dream came true for just a short time, but the sweetness it brought was for him just fine. He found peace with God and a strength that was true, and peace of mind possessed my few. Today our love shines so brightly for him, like his lifelong dream, it will never grow dim. And so, Pappy, we'll forget you never, you're the riding kid from Powder River. Um, one time when I was still driving my hotshot truck, <clears throat> I uh, managed to go through Powder River, Wyoming, and I uh, came across a place that he had mentioned a few times, and that was called Hell's Half Acre. Uh, it's up in Wyoming. You need to look it up on the internet if you want to see what it's about, but it's a w weird geological formation, larger than a half acre, but it's still is weird right out there in the middle of the, the Wyoming prairie. Nobody ever understood as far as I know where he got that nickname, the Riding Kid from Powder River. And then a few years ago, I was looking on the internet and I came across a movie that came out in sometime in the 30s, I believe. And it was either called or it had a guy in it that, that called himself the Riding Kid from Powder River. And it was a Western movie, of course. So, I mean, as far as I can tell, that's probably where he came up with it. I never really asked him about it. So, there's the puppies. They've already done all their exercising. Um, Remy was running around first, getting, trying to get Ruger to chase her. And after she gave up, Ruger started running around trying to get Remy to chase him. <laughs> they both just kind of stood there and watched the other one run around. So, uh, that thing's working good. I pulled out another full tray of bugs this morning. Every morning I pull out a full tray. I mean, we're talking close to a thousand bugs in it. Moths and some sort of beetles. I never really noticed them before I moved here to this particular spot. But we have these little tiny beetle bugs. But a large one would be an eighth of an inch long. And of course they really only come out at night. Boy, they are irritating because you're sitting there. I can't even keep the door open anymore because somehow or another they come in through the door. I think they're coming in through the screen too because I'm getting way too many of them for them to be living inside the house. But I don't remember ever seeing them before I moved here. And I'm talking to where the cabin is. Where the RV is, I don't remember ever seeing them. Maybe I saw a couple, but that was about it. They're just getting kind of pervasive over here. So... And the temperature today is going to be about 107, 108. The normal, the average this time of the year is 97. And I learned an interesting fact on that a couple days ago. And that is the month of August, the average starts out at 98 degrees. By the end of August, the average is 97 degrees. And that's for the high. And... We've only had one day so far this month of less than 105 degrees, and that was yesterday when it was only 104. <laughs> so, 
life in the desert. I'm liking it because we don't have very many of those ear bombing gnats that uh, were so bad last year. Then we had a lot more rain last year. We've hardly had any rain. It hasn't rained in over over two weeks, which kind of surprises me that most of the acatillos still have green on them. Usually a week or so after no more rain, all the leaves fall off. There's a few of them around here that have no more leaves on it, but for the most part, they still got lots of leaves. Of course, this one is what I pour my excess water on. I just emptied out the kitchen drain yesterday for the first time, so it lasted over two weeks. And it was about a half a bucket, and I poured that under that one, under that Ocotillo, some under the saguaro, and some under the Joshua tree. So, not going to waste. My favorite time of the day in the summer. Six o'clock in the morning. The sun's just coming up. It's been up for a little while, but it hasn't started to heat everything up yet. Couple of puppies that have just been fed. Actually, Remy didn't even finish her food. So, sitting here enjoying my coffee. My life on the ranch. Ruger alerted me to a rattlesnake yesterday evening over by one of their water dishes. Let me smell something. There goes Ruger. But, uh, I have water dishes on three sides of the cabin so that one of them's always in the shade. And he was barking at one of them and I walked out and looked and there was a rattlesnake all curled up right by one of the water dishes. So I had to dispatch him. First one I've seen this year. Tomorrow's already out for the day. You probably can't make it out, but I know exactly where it is. I'm going to have to bring them inside again today. This is supposed to get up to 107. That'll be way too hot to keep them outside.
Okay, July 4th. Let's see, where am I? There it is. July 4th, the sun set directly on top of that peak. August 4th is set directly on that peak. So that would mean by September 4th, it would be on the top of that peak. <laughs> that peak there. I would imagine it might be a little bit past that by then, but that'll give you an idea of the way it's moving. And it'll probably be past that peak by September 4th. Ruger doesn't think it's going to rain, because if he thought it was going to rain, he'd be up on the porch <laughs> begging me to let him in. <laughs> he does not like getting wet. <laughs>